Hello gardeners and welcome to Native Plant Channel where today we're going to be discussing the best way to help butterflies and we're going to be talking about different butterflies and what their needs are. But a lot of times helping butterflies when you look at lists or advice you're told that it is to provide a lot of pollinator plants which is great and that is a wonderful thing to do but in order to properly help them you have to go beyond the pollinator plants to their host plants and for example penstemon is a lovely pollinator plant that feeds butterflies and bees and other insects but what we want to look at is what butterflies come to our gardens and what plants do we need to provide food for their caterpillars because the adult butterfly can take nectar from any plant that provides nectar but their caterpillars are going to be tied to more specific plants sometimes only a very specific plant or sometimes a family of plants for example most people are familiar with monarchs and the example that monarch butterflies, the adult, can nectar from any plant that provides nectar. However, their caterpillars would never become adults without milkweeds because their caterpillars need milkweeds. So let's take a look at some of these great plants today, some of these host plants that you need to include in your garden in order for butterflies to thrive. Friends, butterflies desperately need our help. A study published in the journal Science has been in the news all over the last few weeks. The total number of butterflies between 20, the year 2000 and the year 2020 has declined by 22%. This is an alarming decline in just a period of 20 years. Imagine if the human population had declined by one out of every five people on earth and how alarmed we would be by this. So pollinator plants are great, but they are not enough. Please become familiar with the host plants for the butterflies in your area because that's what we need to produce the next generation. Um, you can do this by consulting the websites of the North American Butterfly Association or the Xerce Society. According to Doug Tallamy, the most important tree or plant in general that you can have in your garden for Lepidoptera are the oaks hosting over 500 different species of Lepidoptera. Um, so if you already have an oak on your property, consider it just a wonderful place to protect our wildlife, to provide food for caterpillars, and to provide food for our birds as well, since our birds feast on caterpillars and need them to raise their young. Um, another important tree is the wild black cherry and the wild black cherry hosts several larvae as well. If you have oaks or wild black cherries in your yard, make every effort to conserve them and to not remove the trees because they are providing a very important food source for a wide range of Lepidoptera in your garden. So consider them habitat, consider them an important staple of your garden and make every effort to keep them thriving. The beautiful butterfly you're seeing here is the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail, nectaring on garden flocks. These are common garden visitors and so welcome in our gardens. Um, their caterpillars eat wild cherry and also tulip trees, also called tulip poplars. Now, this version is called the black morph. Uh, of the eastern tiger swallowtail. For some reason in some of the populations, some of them will come out as th this darker color and you'll see little of the yellow. Milkweeds are a family of plants and this one is orange milkweed. As you can see, it is an excellent pollinator plant as well, providing uh, for bees and other insects that are flying around. But in addition to providing the nectar, the orange milkweed like this and other milkweeds also provide food for our monarchs. Their caterpillars eat the leaves and often the flowers of these plants as they are uh, completing their life cycle. Swamp milkweed has beautiful rosy colored flowers and is a great pollinator plant. But beyond just hosting pollinators, it is a host plant for the monarch butterfly as well. 
here the flowers are not open yet. Now, um, it grows in average to wet garden soils, whereas orange milkweed will grow in average to dry soils. Um, so you can choose which plant works best in your garden. And sometimes people are concerned about the orange aphids that they see on this plant and are concerned about should they do anything about them. No, it won't kill the plant. It will make the plant look a little bit more unsightly, but you don't need to do anything about them. The monarchs will be just fine. Next to the swamp milkweed is a goldenrod. And goldenrods are some of the most important plants that you can provide for our Lepidoptera, meaning our butterflies, moths, and skippers. Because we do have to remember that there are nine to 10 times um, as many moths as there are butterflies. And those moths, their caterpillars, help feed our birds. So they're very needed in the garden. So goldenrod feeds many different kinds of Lepidoptera. Another thing that you need to have is native grasses, such as this little blue stem. Many of our skippers feed on um, little blue stem or other blue grasses, as well as our switchgrass, our native switchgrass. So these are all things that will help make life better by increasing the number of caterpillars in your garden. It's exciting to have butterflies and other insects right in your backyard and to watch all the amazing life forms you are providing for. But it means one does have to change their thinking and stop seeing plants as merely decorations. I have lots of pearly everlasting that you see here. And every year, American ladies reproduce in my garden. Like most living things, some years their populations are much higher than others. An important point is that having a large number of caterpillars means the plant themselves are going to go through a less attractive phase while they're being munched on. But that's great news because it means the plant is doing its job and you are adding to the butterflies in the ecosystem, especially at a time when they are experiencing such, such steep declines. Enjoy watching the life you are providing for in your garden. And don't worry that the leaves are chewed and somewhat messy. Very few of these caterpillars will make it to be an adult butterfly, as birds, wasps, and other predators will consume them, all part of the ecosystem and the circle of life. As the season goes on, plants will continue to grow and recover and the damage will be less noticeable. Another larval host plant is wild blue indigo or baptisia. Um, this one has already flowered and you can see the seed pods. It's a lovely plant that has a bluish tint to it and flowers in, usually in blue, except now um, they are coming up with cultivars that flower in, in other colors as well. And in some places there is a white one that is native. Um, however, this is just a lovely plant. It will grow large, um, will almost look like a shrub, as you can see, um, can take up a good amount of room. And know that you are feeding caterpillars with a plant that is attractive, that is mostly pest free, and whose leaves will stay very healthy looking throughout the gardening season as well. So it's one that you have no reason to fear in terms of, oh yeah, but when the caterpillars eat it, it's going to look ugly. Um, it doesn't, it stays very healthy. If you live in an area where you're not as concerned about deer, um, consider using blueberries as a hedge. Blueberries are a wonderful native plant here you can see uh, these shrubs loaded with it. This is high bush blueberry, and it's a good pollinator plant in the spring. It flowers early, providing uh, nectar and pollen for our bees. In fact, there are specialist bees that can only survive on the pollen of blueberries, but it is also a caterpillar host plant. Violets are a plant that many people try to remove from their gardens and especially their lawns. And that's unfortunate because they are really beautiful flowers. They stay very low to the ground and always look neat and tidy. And most importantly, are the host plant for all kinds of fritillary butterflies, such as the great spangled fritillary. 
Sadly, I used to have these travel through my garden all the time, but I haven't seen any in a few years now. But please make sure you grow violets in order to protect our fritillaries. Another very important way to help our butterflies is to leave the leaves. If you clean up leaves, you will be removing butterflies that overwinter perhaps as pupa hidden in those leaves that drop from trees. And by pupa, we're talking about how does the butterfly transition from a caterpillar to the adult butterfly. And they do that either through a chrysalis or many people are familiar with the term cocoon. And cocoon refers to the one that's like, for example, from the silk moths that have what look like threads, silk threads, while the majority of butterflies use a chrysalis, such as the beautiful jade um, with gold dots that uh, the monarchs use. Here in the Northeast, another larval host plant is spicebush. It is the host plant for the spicebush swallowtail, um, which also uses sassafras. And this is a lovely black butterfly, and spicebush is just a beautiful golden color in the fall. A lovely perennial that will carpet the ground for you and give you yellow spring blooms is golden alexanders, a host plant for the black swallowtail butterfly. However, this butterfly uses everything in the carrot family, including parsley and dill, which do a great job attracting them and raising their caterpillars. Here on parsley, you can see various instars of the black swallowtail, meaning its caterpillars at various stages in its life, um, which you can see look very different. Thank you for watching Native Plant Channel and for everything you are doing to make your garden more environmentally friendly and to be a habitat for our many butterflies, bees, and birds. Thanks for watching and bring on the buzz in your garden.